I'm in South East London for the most unsuspecting, but I think one of the most impressive car caves I'm ever likely to see. It's essentially a private museum with some very quirky cars and some infamous cars from days of old. It's behind this roller shutter door and it's a chap called Gary. Oh, welcome to the Late Break Show. Car caves are proudly supported by EBC Brakes. The slow reveal. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good to see you, Gary. Good to see you. To see you. This is this is Gary Hillman. Gary, you and I have been emailing one another for about fifteen years. Yes, yeah, I've right, never yeah. actually met you. I've seen little pictures of your den, and this is weird because this is we're underneath a block of flats here. Yep. And you think you're going to go into a multi-storey car park, but this is completely off, off limits. Nobody seems to know it's here. I can't wait to have a look round. Let's go have a look. Okay, Gary, well, before we go down into the kind of the full cave, <laughs> and it is a proper cave, this one. This is your practical everyday car. Yes, yeah, my daily driver, yeah, yeah. This is one of my favourite Ferraris because I love the shooting brake, the FF. Yeah. Um, why? What made you buy it? Uh, Practical, really, yeah. yeah <laughs> practical is like you say with a shooting brake, it's a state car. Um, if I go to an antiques fair, I can put pedal cars in there. And as a daily job as a builder, I can get bags of cement, lintels in there, everything. So right. you do actually put stuff in the back? That gets used all the time, yeah. Does it really? Yeah. yeah. So, so bought new or bought? No, I did actually buy it off JK. So I bought it off JK. Did you? Um, yeah, we put it in an auction and it didn't make reserve, so I bid him on it afterwards and yeah, accepted the offer. And I met him a couple of times after that and he wasn't too pleased. Oh really? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I got it at a very good price, so, I say it, yeah. the, 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 These are a good value Ferrari. Yeah, yeah, it's got the Grigo Silverstone, which that's the color I wanted. Originally I wanted one with black interior because I don't look after cars. And, uh, <laughs> but this has got like a really rare baseball interior. It's like, I think it's about 35 grand extra. <sighs> and I've got to like really like the interior now. So yeah, it's sort of perfect. Looks yeah, mega. Per perfect really. So a well used, slightly builder spec FF. Now we've got the practical car out of the way. Let's go and have a look at the rest. Okay, so from an FF Ferrari to to a 59 Cadillac Eldorado Beeritz, yeah. which yeah. was which is the top top one, yeah, yeah. So this was uh, approximately seven and a half thousand dollars new in 1959, which was a lot of money. And because it's the Eldorado Beeritz, it was near enough double the price of a, a normal Series 62. So um, yeah, Gosh. It's very very desirable. And this was the peak, the pinnacle of excess fins and chrome. Yeah, with the pinnacle with the fins and the Eldorado has a stainless trim, which is different from the Series 62, which really makes it and highlights the fins even more. How long have you had this thing for? Uh, I've had this now for 22 years, bought in Sweden. So Sweden's absolutely mad on there's more in Sweden than there is in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, so I yeah. hear. So they, they made 1,320 and this is actually number 1,000, which is nice. Wow. And it's an original Persian sand car, sprayed red, but it should be like Persian sand, which is um, the most desirable color as well. So, so you, but the, the, these two are the cars you kind of spend most of your time yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a daily driver and basically this is a summer car. Yeah. So, and being a convertible, it's sort of nice when the sun's out and you need, want a convertible basically. It's <laughs> yeah. bloody cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm looking behind the camera uh, just, I mean, bloody hell, Gary. This is, I mean, I said that it's sort of like a private museum because you are a bit of a collector of oddities. Yeah, anything weird and wonderful, creative, that sort of normally really that sort of post-war era when there's a load of optimism about and everyone's trying to create the future, coming up with these mad ideas. Yeah. No internet or anything. So you just think, and that moment in time, how did the people get their inspiration from? You know, not even having watching the TV. No, most people didn't have any TV. So yeah. So and coming up with weird and wonderful designs and yeah, really rare stuff. So yeah, it's just what 
So well, actually, it's an addiction, basically. <laughs> no, well, I, I, I know from, from our emails, yeah. and we'll talk, you, this is the great thing about this car cave. You've got everything from bubble cars to full-size Cadillacs to like a massive amount of automobilia um, and custom cars, you know, high-profile custom cars, yeah. which we'll come on to. Yeah. This was being delivered just as we were about to start filming. This is your latest acquisition. Yeah, Mark 1 scooter car, always... It's, it's weird, I could have bought, like it was, I wouldn't say common, but easily, easy to buy 25, 30 years ago, so. And you, and you didn't at and the I time. And I didn't, yeah, so literally, I've had to put two noughts behind the ends of what I could have bought one for originally, <laughs> like, yeah, but. but Is this gonna be restored? I wanna keep the original, original paint on it, so it's, it's trying to, because it's got nice original paint, it's just trying to do a sort of, a, a recommission a recommission more than a restoration and that's you know 10 5 10 years ago it would have been a full restoration but now it's all of trying to keep the originality you know, yeah it's people people like it it's a beautiful like nice baby blue color before we delve any deeper into this car cave this is the first bubble car of of quite a few you're going to see yeah you've got a bit of a a relation a professional relationship with with these ones here behind the camera, the, the peels. Yeah. So obviously the peel, peel P50 and a Trident are sort of regarded as the most sort of sought after bubble cars of that sort of, um, you know, that era. Yeah. Sort of the rarest built on, it's just a combination of things built on the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man, I can see the, yeah, the badge, yeah. British, it's the P50 is the world's smallest production car and the Trident with a bubble top is just a proper bubble. It's bubble a Jetsons yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah, so there was big demand for them. So then we sort of re restarted up the uh, company, Pill Engineering, and actually built the rep replicas now. So yeah, so we, so we sell the replicas all over the world, basically, yeah. Amazing. And, and you can on, buy on, them as piston or electric? Yeah, piston what? or electric. They're going on... They're on the Microsoft computer game at the moment, so it's always very toys made, so it gets very high profile. And obviously, Jeremy Glarkson with the Top Gear. I know. Yeah, put it to made another. it infamous. Yeah, made it infamous, yeah. So from, from the Peel P50, which is a single-seater car. Peel P50 single-seater, yeah. Um, we almost foolishly walked past one of the most dangerous-looking things I've ever seen <laughs> with an engine. A mono, a mono wheel? You call them mono wheels? Mono wheels, yes. Yeah. I've started getting into them recently because they're just totally mad, basically. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's an original '30s one. It hasn't Is got it? the right tire, right tire on it, but that's an original '30s one, and that's sort of a 1980s one. Bloody hell! Yeah, very dangerous. <laughs> this does look like an accident waiting to happen. Uh, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. But from the '30s, wow. Yeah. Gosh. And we, oh my gosh. Look at, look at this. So we go around the corner of the, the car cave. I mean, this, is, this has got to be the most eclectic car cave that I've seen. I know that is, that's a Peel Trident, isn't that's it? That's a Peel Trident mould, yeah. Brilliant. And right next to it, just casually, with a bit of dust on it, <laughs> is one of the, I, mean, I guess this is where we need to kick off the conversation about the George Barris custom vehicles. Yeah, yeah. So for those of you who aren't, aren't familiar, Barris is probably most famous for the Batmobile. Yeah, yeah. He was like the custom car builder for Hollywood. Yeah. During yeah. the 60s or 50s? No, no, he started 40s, yeah, 40s he started. Yeah, just I think it was just after, I think it was actually pre-war, yeah, 30s and 40s he started. So he was ahead of the game where he used to sort of just slightly customize the car so he was chop the roofs channel them like 49 obviously most famous for the 49 Mer mercury yeah chopped it and just made it more slender like nine and then uh then he started getting more into the sort of this is a, what you call a 60s show car and the batmobile so i met george a couple of times he, he died approximately six years ago and uh, so I was lucky enough to meet him a couple of times and did become good friends with him which was really nice did you yeah it was really nice I went to the funeral out, back out in LA flew out and, really yeah, you went to yeah. Barris's funeral yeah yeah, Gosh. Went, yeah went out to Barris's funeral George's funeral yeah so, so so this here is a very like very important car if you well, 
obviously can't speak to George now, but when I spoke to George at the time, I didn't realize how important this car was because this is the first car that he built from scratch. Is it? And it's the first car he built with a bubble top. So at a, at a time, he was, and there's some great pictures of the Batmobile in the background when he was turning the back the Futura, Futura uh, con full concept car into the Batmobile. Yeah. But he, he was just sort of done a sort of bodge job on the Batmobile, shall we say, to do that quick and cheaply, where the Alvin and the Chipmunks was a, was a uh, very well-known TV series. So he's spending all his time and money creating this car, creating this car. Wow. So this was, this was to promote Alvin and the Chipmunks yeah, the first, first time around. Yeah, yeah, it was, first time around, yeah, yeah. My yeah. gosh, what a wild thing. What's the fascination with the Barris cars? Is it just- Well, George Barris is, to me, you've got George Barris, he's the daddy of custom cars. Yeah. And oh, well, I've called, I personally think it's art, you know, <laughs> so- It is sculpture, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yes, art and sculpture. So George Barris, to my mind, is the, is the uh, daddy. And then you've got Andy Saunders from England, which is the UK or the European sort of daddy of custom cars. So those are the sort of, really the only ones I do collect. So, the, okay, we'll, we'll move. We've got, we got so much to try and squeeze in. The Sidewinder, obviously a V8 engine, transverse V8 trike. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Sounds lethal. <laughs> Looks amazing, but also lethal. Yeah. An another custom f exhibition vehicle. Bloody hell, look at these tires. Yeah, so at the time as well, George was, all the kids, like these was really massive at the time. So uh, he was doing articles for like the chopper when the chopper was, so the builds, in, builds of the cars in the chopper. Yep. And then because he was building the cars from scratch, he could actually sell the cars to license the cars. So, because he owned, he owned the car, but or owned whatever he is building. The intellectual so, property yeah, yeah, of it. intellectual property rights. So then instead of like Corvette or GM, you know, the car, man, car toy manufacturers used to have to pay GM Motors to get the license to, to sell them. If you built the car yourself, you didn't need to. The pedal car thing, all the way across hit the back, and no two seem to be the same, Gary. No. I'm yeah. looking at Rolls Royces, I'm looking at like Moskvich's or something, I'm looking at, there's a Blimmin' Jag XJ there, there's a Volvo Amazon, I yeah. think. Um, I mean, okay, so, that is a, this is an Andy Saunders custom build. I know yeah. that this is, I, I remember seeing this in Street Machine, yeah, I think, yeah, when it, yeah, when so it came I, out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a Reliant three-wheeler underneath. Yep. Yeah. Rebodied with a speedboat. Yep. Yeah. So street legal speedboat. Yep. Yeah. Landlocked, which is just a, a, a genius idea. But next to a car that actually does go in the water, the Amphi car. Yep, yeah, the Amphi car. It's built in the early 60s in Germany. Uh, Triumph Herald running gear? Triumph Herald running. Is that right? Yeah, and a sort of weird gearbox. So you've got two, two levers for the gearbox. So you drive it in the water with the wheels on and the pedals going, and then you turn the wheels off and then you just use the... Uh, Have you actually swum it? Yeah, yeah, it's got yeah, life swam, jackets yeah, in the back. Yeah, I swam it and I ran out of petrol in it, yeah. Did you? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, my act off. You had to row it? Or, or row it back and run down the petrol garage and get some petrol because it does eat the petrol up in the water. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the speedboat car is, is, is a stunning idea. This... This is my favourite car. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. This is your so, favourite car? This is my favourite car. So everyone says to me, and Andy's very pleased when I actually do... So I was sitting next to his sister at Goodwood once and uh, I told his sister and uh, I know he was made up Andy was, but he is, I'd never sell this car where, it's, you know, I just don't think it can be replaced. It was just that moment in time, like you said earlier, I see it being built in Street Machine. Yeah. And then I went to the Chelsea Crows and I see it at the Chelsea Crows and I just, ah, oh, just loved it. Was it for sale at the time? No, it wasn't. And. Um, and then I think Andy chopped it in, I think he might have chopped it in for a 49 Merc and he chopped it in for something and then it ended up with a car dealer and it just, uh, yeah, and then I had to- You had to get I, it. I had to get it, but it's the most fun car to drive around in a city. Do you drive around London in this? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And it is like just, everyone just loves it and starts creasing up. I bet they do. You can't take it seriously, can you? We'll move on to another incredible, 
um, show custom. I actually, weirdly, when I first walked in, I didn't notice it because it was so low and yeah. kind of swamped with all the other kind of trinkets. Um, so this was another car built purely for exhibition purposes? This was actually built for a film. So there's a Disney film where the video's down now, where it's a great, oh, yeah. it's a great film, and it is on, the, uh, is on YouTube, if you watch it, where they actually... Dad, can I borrow the car? Yeah. So uh, there's a part in there where they actually uh, draw this car out. So he draws the car, and, it's, and then they do, and they, you see it building it from scratch, from so being drawn and from being built. My gosh, yeah, well, I'm pretty sure I've got an old set of Top Trumps playing cards yeah. with this on. It, it was is, the, yeah. cus the custom cars yeah. Top Trumps, it which was, were always yeah. my favourites. Yeah. The, I same, mean, it's, the same again, they make the models, so you made the models for this, which are really collectible now. Yeah. Which I kept, when I bought it, I just bought every single model on eBay. <laughs> you can <laughs> so, see, yeah, you've got your little And cabinet. now they've gone through the roof, so they're really collectible. And this is one of one. The only one, yeah, one. It is one. the only one. Well, only one of one, yeah. So, I mean, these cars are probably better known um, in the States, and maybe people from the States are watching this. How did these things end up in the UK? Did you import them? Well, it's like I say, they all went to the south of France. So, the George Barris on his auction went to the south of France, and then I, I had to bring them all back from the south of France, which was a bit of a mission in itself. It's actually cheaper to get a car back from America than it is from the south of France. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> I almost missed the, the motorbike. Now, that's a significant bike. Do you want to tell me about that bike? Yeah, that's Eddie Kidd's bike that he used to do all the stunts, stunts and wheelies and stuff and do the, the pre-show before he'd done the jumps. Wow. So I bought that off Eddie approximately about 10 years ago. And, uh, yeah, Did you? Had, yeah, we had a few, uh, few bottles of champagne together as well and a good night out in Battersea, so yeah. Okay, so Peel Trident. Yeah. So the two-seater with the mad dome bubble is this a new one? Is this one of uh, your... Yeah, that's a replica, yeah. So we yeah. built that for a drinks company and then bought it back off them with a trailer. It's got a trailer, bloody... <laughs> yeah, put your beer in the back. <laughs> We've just looked at Eddie Kidd's, one of Eddie Kidd's original yeah. bikes. We now have Evil Knievel's Messerschmitt yeah. bubble car. Yeah. What's the story behind this? I don't know the full story, but the story it looks like, because it's only done, I think, 75 miles since new, so I assume it was... It didn't sell from a dealership, so Evil's obviously done a deal with them, sprayed it all up, and then used to drive into town before, like an exhibit, like you know, a, you know, to, to a promote, parade, promote the show going forward. Like, yeah, okay, bit more bubble car action. Gosh, I don't know what this car is. <laughs> well, I do know, but I always forget the name of it. So, so oh, so it is metal topped. Metal. What an odd shaped beast. Yeah. So it's, does this predate the bubble car era? I mean, this is. This apparently is meant to be 1948 49 French. Mm. Um, just the maddest Art Deco thing you've seen. And this single wheel at the back that, like a dodging car, goes around 300. So you can 360 degrees. it. 360, yeah. So it, it's rear steer. Yeah, rear Not steer. Not front steer. No, it's rear steer, yeah. So this has got to be an so interesting drive. Yeah, so it's got an engine in the back, rear, rear steer and <laughs> rear motor, so. That's a four-wheel bubble car, which is a very rare Isetta. Yeah, oh, so that's recent purchase. Um, convert, convertible, 8,000 miles, all original, except for it's had a spray on, on the outside, but all original inside and underneath and stuff, yeah. So. You don't see the four-wheel four -wheel ones very often? No. No, it's beautiful. They was mostly export um, the four wheel ones, so there's not too many four wheel ones. And obviously, convertible being the convertible is uh, yeah very sort of the Trojan, yeah. right, right hand drive. Made in were they made in Brighton yeah, Bright, or something? Made in Brighton, the Trojans. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I remember I I, own, I did own a Reb one very similar, and I drove it about three times. It was terrifying. <laughs> So this is your other custom vehicle. I mean, it almost doesn't look like a car. Next to ET, 
with the creepy handlebars on his neck. It's the Paul Hustler, it's called, yeah. Paul I mean, table car, yeah. But this, so th th these pedal cars, just so for context, these are sitting on a full size, what looks like a full size pool table. Yeah, Brunswick. Which is yeah, on the shelf. It's actually a real rare vintage pool table as well, like Brunswick, Brunswick vintage. Full table. So this is on the chassis of the car. Yeah. Exhaust the engines in there. Yeah, it's got a Hemi engine in it. Yeah. It's got. It's a Hemi. Yeah. Bloody hell, it is. With with porky rack on the side, and that's presumably yeah. You, this is where you sit <laughs> with a universal joint steering. No pedals, so it's all hand operated. Bloody hell. I am not familiar with this. A Mink, and does that say Lambretta? Yeah. So a Lambretta micro car that's very curvaceous. That's the only car Lambretta ever built. So that is the Lambretta prototype. And that's the only one they ever built, that one is, yeah. Wow. So a properly rare thing then. Yeah. It wasn't <laughs> the best of cars and they just built that one and that was it. I remember seeing this. Um, this is called a Wright Craft scooter car, but not affiliated with the other scooter car, which no. we saw, is it? No. This is like the one of the godfathers of the bubble car era because it's yep. 30s. This is 30s, yeah. And I bought one of these. I stumbled across one and bought it, and I sort of regret buying it because it, it needed putting back on the road because it's yeah. road legal. Yeah. A seriously rare car. This is, for me, this is when it gets properly sexy. As someone that also appreciates old funfair stuff, I've always had a, 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 a silly hankering for a Dodgem. This is like the golden era of bumper cars. And you'll probably know more than I, Gary, but I certainly know that Supercar was a brand name, um, a British company from the, the Midlands. Yep. And the name supercar, the company supercar, predates the term supercar as in mid-engine Lamborghini Mura. This is the original supercar. I kid you not. I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. What a beautiful thing that they were as well. Is this a supercar or is this a Dodgem? Because Dodgem was sure. a brand name, yeah, wasn't it? Dodgem, yeah. And these are right-hand drive, I noticed. Yeah. Not that it matters because you're not going on the road with them, but what an amazing thing. So what, I mean, Look, there's a, there's, a, there's a really, really cool um, powerboat just behind us. 50s powerboat. I mean... Yeah, 1957 Performer. I mean, look, look, just look at the outboard. Look at the wings on it. I mean, it's, I've seen a photo of this on a trailer behind your Cadillac. Yeah, yeah, it is quite... A... Which is a proper piece. <laughs> so I suppose one question I have for you, Gary, is what's next? What's... Is there anything on your list of like, I have to own one of those before I die because I just have to? Um, yeah, there's various things that I want to buy. Um, various. Various. Uh, and then there's, so you get one off stuff that only comes up and you have to buy it basically. And, yeah. then, you, and then you like, you know, Austin J40 Pathfinders that you can you, know, you can just you, get you can buy them anytime you want, but then I like buying a really rare variety of that. Okay, so that's what that's what I do. So it's just um, and pedal cars again. So are these the ones you were talking about? That are yeah. Cool? So that's that's a Murray Atomic Missile Launcher, nineteen fifty seven fifty eight American, and that's a Triang Triang Supersonic, nineteen sixty two. Both really rare space AG. Um, and sort of very, very collectible now. It's, so they're two of the rarest out of this whole yeah, bunch? Yeah, they'd be two of the rarest ones. Yeah, there's a Murray boat there as well. That boat's yeah. beautifully patinated. Yeah. Look at it. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love the obsession. Is there anything in your, uh, in your collection that isn't in this room? Uh, got me best stuff in me penthouse up the top, yeah. So. <laughs> you, you got your best stuff in your penthouse up the top? I'm not, are we allowed up there? Yeah, that's what I say, yeah, you're allowed up there, yeah. yeah. Come on, let's have a look. So we're now, um, up in the penthouse. So we, we were in the basement. Yep. We've come up in the lift. Yep. Again, this is your sort of private lair. Yep. 
Just got a couple of cool historic soapbox Races, race yeah. cars just stashed there. Brilliant. Show me through, Gary. Show me through. I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy this. Wow. Crumbs. Look at this. This is a brilliant. So this is like a proper sort of 1950s sort of diner, boudoir. Yeah, a bit Miami South Beach. Yeah, oh. so. Um, this is awesome. Is that one of your modern peels? No, that's, a, that's an original, yeah. That's an original yeah. Trident. So the, yeah. see the Trident's awesome. The bubble top, two seats. The 50 behind you, what so, makes that one extra well, special? Well, this is, this is the prototype. So this is the prototype, single wheel at the front on the prototype. Oh, yeah. And the production one, they had the single wheel at the, at the rear. So, this, so when they done the test drive of that round the TT circuit on the Isle of Man, basically it just turned over. So that's <laughs> cra been crashed almost instantly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but that, to me, that is the rarest and most sort of the car in the world, basically, yeah. Does it run? It's a holy grail. Uh, no, it doesn't run, no, no. You're not tempted to take that one out for a spin. So no. hang on, did you push that into the lift and take it down the lift? No, I carried it upstairs, yeah. You carried it yeah. up the stairs? Oh, a couple of us carried it out the stairs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just art, isn't it? Look at that. That is, yeah. that is art, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I mean, that is art. I think that the Trident is pure Jetsons. It's pure Jetsons. Do you mind if I do yeah, this? God. I mean, my grandkids have been in it, so all the seats are all over the place. Look at it. <laughs> it's the craziest with that single spoke steering wheel, that really, really basic hoop. I love it. Well, it's the dome top that really makes it, isn't it? Yeah. So that is, that is the ultimate bubble car. I don't know if this is the, the last, the first and the last time I'm ever going to get a chance to say um, we stood next to a swimming pool um, in an apartment block on the top floor uh, with two micro cars just on plinths. And that's the joy of these episodes of the Car Caves playlist. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks to Gary for showing us around his, his secret um, car there. I mean, I'm pretty blown away by it, frankly. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to The Late Break Show, why not subscribe? Comment below if you've got a comment. Maybe you've got an interesting car cave that you want to share with me. If so, get in touch. Thanks for watching.